Hello YouTube and welcome to Project 2845. If you're familiar with bandwidth audio products, you can probably already guess what Project 2845 is going to be. Uh, and that is a single-ended triode amplifier using a pair of 845 tubes. Right now on the bench, we have our 22A3 amplifier, which is our five watt monoblock single-ended amplifier using a pair of 2A3 tubes. This amplifier for five watts sounds extremely good and has really strong control over loudspeakers all the way up to big 15 inch woofers because of its parallel output stage. Although it's only five watts, its output impedance is rather low for most single-ended triode amplifiers and has really nice control of the loudspeaker and sounds really robust and strident and dynamic and all the, all the things that we'd actually expect of maybe a push-pull amplifier with feedback. And again, that's achieved because we use a pair of two A3 tubes in parallel single-ended as well as a transformer ratio that's not optimized necessarily for more output power but to present the loudspeaker a lower impedance loads reflected back to these output tubes. Project 2845, the goal of that is to use a similar approach, but using 845 triodes for hopefully around 40 watts of output power. With our 2 to a 3 mono amplifier, 5 watt amplifier, we normally suggest a 96 dB SPL speaker for most rooms. If you're in a smaller room, and don't necessarily need to play at really high SPLs or sound levels. Um, 93 dB is probably the minimum recommended speaker efficiency for a small room. So every time for a speaker we double the amplifier power, we gain about 3 dB of SPL. So if our 22A3 amplifier, 96 dB recommended minimum for a speaker, if we jump to 10 watts, we can now move to approximately 93 dB SPL minimum speaker. Double power again, we gain another 3 dB to 90 dB. And double power again from 20 to 40 watts, we can get we can drive effectively a speaker that's around 87 dB SPL, one watt, one meter. So we need exponentially more amplifier power for only 3 dB improvements in SPL. And this is why, although we have our 5 watt 22A3 amplifier today, my goal is to jump up to a much higher power amplifier using a pair of 845s in this 40 watt range. Yes, we could develop a 300B amplifier that maybe delivers 10 watts, but in terms of SPL, you're not really gaining a whole lot. You know, you're, you're, you're better off in many circumstances using our parallel single-ended 22A3 amplifier, although it's only five watts, again, the parallel output stage means it's extremely robust and can really control loudspeakers for and, and really deliver really strong five watts compared to uh, other amplifiers that maybe use a single-ended, uh, single tube and single-ended triode configuration, like a single 300B delivering 10 watts. So it's kind of that reasoning why it's really the first, you know, the first few watts make are the most important in terms of developing SPL. So if you really need a much more powerful amplifier or five watts is not enough power for your loudspeaker, 10 watts is not going to make a big difference. So that's why we're jumping from the 22A3 type five watt amplifier to hopefully a 40 watt 845 amplifier. This five watt is great for horn speakers, your clips the scalas, your clips horns, um, you know, anything in this, you know, mid to upper 90 dB range. This 40 watt range will really open the door though for a much wider range of loudspeakers. And if you're in a small room, 84 dB SPL loudspeakers should be, um, should also work really well with this design. So that's kind of the outline of the project and why you know, we're not going to do a 300B, at least for now, we're not going to target doing a 300B or parallel 300B amplifier. We're going to jump right to a much higher power amplifier. If you need the power of a 300B, it's not really going to offer you much more than over our current uh, 22A3 5 watt amplifier, and you might as well jump up to big power. So 
845s is the way to go. Our goal with this design is to really deliver something that sounds just like a, just a bigger version of this amplifier. And one of the reasons, again, I mentioned this amplifier sounds so good is it's low output impedance. This chart is a couple different uh, output tube configurations and single-ended, and using a transformer impedance that's nominally recommended in these data sheets, we can get an estimated output impedance. So a single-ended single 2A3 tube into a 2.5K ohm transformer, which I think is from the uh, data sheet for the 2A3 tube, um, probably from RCA, the output of units is 2.56 ohms in an ideal world. As the tube ages and over its lifespan and once you add in the losses of the transformer, this number will become quite a bit larger. A parallel to a 3 amp, and this is similar to how we're operating it in our uh, 2 to a 3 amplifier, we actually keep a fairly high transformer impedance ratio. We gain a little bit of output power because we have less voltage division from the plate resistance to our reflected load. We have our plate resistance because we've got two tubes now in parallel. But by keeping a high impedance ratio transformer, we get much lower output impedance. So we gain a bit of power and we reduce the output impedance. That's why this amplifier sounds so robust. Yes, it's only five watts, open loop, single-ended, but its low output impedance means it can control uh, the loudspeaker through all five watts really well. If we jump to something like a 300B and use a 4K ohm transformer, our output impedance is actually still a little bit worse than, the two, two, than our parallel 22A3 amplifier. Worst of all, if you need more amplifier power, often you need better loudspeaker control because you're moving, in ex your excursion on your woofer is gonna be higher. So as you jump up in power, we actually want our output impedance to drop. So as I mentioned before, instead of doing you know 300B or a parallel 300B, that gives us a bit more power over our, over our parallel 2A3 amplifier, we're gonna jump to 845s. So a pair of 845s into an 8K ohm load, which would be our transformer impedance, we should be expecting, at least on paper, less than an ohm of output impedance while delivering 40 watts. So that's, uh, that's the order and that's the goal of this project. What I hope to do throughout the series is document building up the um, pre-amplifier stages all the way to building our prototype and the final amplifier design. So this will be hopefully a lot of fun for everybody. One thing that you're probably aware of if you're watching this video and are familiar with 845 tubes is they are notoriously hard to drive. Based on that 8K ohm transformer impedance ratio that we're targeting, we need at least 164 volts peak on the grids of our 845s. So that's about a 116 volt RMS signal. Because we have two tubes in parallel, we have a twice the input capacitance. So if we assume a gain of five for the amplification gain of our 845 tubes loaded with the 8K transformer, which is in a reasonable assumption, the input on the grids should present around 180 picofarad load to our driver stage. If we consider that 180 picofarads and calculate the slew rate requirement, slew rate being 2 pi, your target frequency times V peak, V peak is our 164 volts on our grid, F is uh, the highest frequency we want to operate the amp while maintaining that grid voltage, we can calculate the required slew rate. And because the capacitance of this tube is high, or, or parallel 845s is high, and the signal swing on the grids is high for this tube, the slew rate requirements become pretty substantial. And this is why an 845 amplifier is traditionally very hard to drive. And to make it sound good, you need an extremely robust driver stage that can drive the grids. Otherwise, this amp is not gonna sound very good. I've been looking at a lot of 845 tube designs and it's, um, 
No surprise that there's quite a few now Chinese manufactured 845 amplifiers that are rather cheap. And by cheap or inexpensive, I mean maybe $3,000 to $6,000 range. While that's a lot of money, as we go through this project, I think, I think you're going to see why it's really hard to develop a really good 845 amplifier for that money. And in my opinion, if you're looking at that sort of amplifier and are looking at maybe some of those less expensive options from the Chinese brands, you're probably better off spending your money on a different type of amplifier and you know use that money more effectively in something that's not as expensive. Otherwise, I, otherwise you're just compromising. I mean, same thing with this amplifier. This is, um, you know, we use a 6SN7 parallel cathode follower to drive our uh, 2A3 tubes. We can also get enough voltage gain from our 6SL7, so that works out okay. But with the 845, with these voltages, we're going to need more preamp stages and even more drive to drive the grids of the output tubes than this 22A3 amplifier. So for that reason, you know, the, the cheaper Chinese amplifiers, while they may be attractive, they're going to be a pretty compromised implementation, in my opinion, to get really good sound. And so I don't think you're ever going to be very happy with those. And if you read on the forums online, I think a lot of people agree with that notion. It seems like there's a lot of people trying to tweak them into something they're really not designed to be from the beginning. Not to mention the output transformer considerations for a 40 watt single ended amplifier is that's that's going that's a big output transformer and if it's not designed appropriately appropriately and doesn't have an appropriate core size to handle these sort of power levels it's not going to sound good okay so ah sorry for that tangent but now that we know our slew rate requirements for so 50 kilohertz 51.5 volts per microsecond would be our required slew rate in order to drive this 164 volt peak into our 180 picofarad load. From there, we can then determine what the current requirement is from our driver. So the current into any capacitive load is I equals C dVdt, where dVdt is our slew rate, change in voltage per change in time. So we can plug our slew rate into that I equals C dVdt equation for a capacitor, rearrange for I, and we can figure out what current we need to slew into this capacitance in order to meet our slew rate requirement. And at 50 kilohertz, we need a driver capable of sourcing 9.3, 9.27, milliamps of current. Again, this is assuming ideal con conditions kind of on pen and paper, but if we're going to be honest with ourselves, we're going to need, you know, a couple factors greater than this of actual current. So that means our driver tube will have to be able to supply, you know, 10, 20, 30 milliamps of current swing into the output grids of a parallel 845 amplifier. And that's one of the one of many of the challenges that we'll face when developing this amplifier is developing a robust enough driver. Okay, so that's kind of an introduction on kind of my thinking and why, why we're developing this amplifier. On the top of our 2A3 amplifier, 22A3 amplifier there, you can see a 6SN7 on the right, a 6SL7, or sorry, a, 6, a 6L6 power tube and a KT88 power tube. Here's an 845. You can see what a monster this tube is. Here's our two A3s. Here's our 845. So each chassis, we're going to be driving two of these in parallel single-ended for about 40 watts. So quite a monstrous tube. Um, we're looking forward to this project and hope you stay tuned and follow through the different parts as we start designing and uh, build out the preamplifier and start prototyping. Thanks for watching and take care.